Alright guys, 505RC here with you. Today in the workshop. So, my first upgrade is changing these out. These things are soft, but the compound is just not, it's not grippy. I mean, they feel a little grippier now that they've been ran. But, the, as you guys can see in my video, all three videos that I've posted of this thing, box stock trail run, <coughs> Um, you know, it doesn't grip. These tires slide everywhere. And we, while we're running them throughout the trail, we could feel them getting warm from the sun. I'd, I'd set the truck where the sun was beaming right on one side, and then I'd flip around and beam it on the other side so they get real hot, these tires, from the sunlight. And they still won't grip. I mean, they tried, and when they do grip, it just sends the truck over in a weird way and I mean these tires don't perform they look great but they just don't perform like a tire should so today we're gonna change that out and I wanted to point out something also I mean they're really soft you know and uh, but they just don't grip that good compared to my rock beasts pit bulls or rock growlers, my my bad. I mean, see, I could barely slide my thumb across that. And that's crazy how it's spaced, this um, hex on here. There we go. See that? That's cool how it's spaced. It's not right up against it. So that's neat. First time taking this truck apart. So, you know, so let's set her up. A little bit on her side here and we'll throw these tires that I had on the Bronco on this because this is a way better tire compound versus um, those stock Gen 8 tires so we're gonna throw these guys on there and see how well she does on the uh, this upcoming weekend so These tires aren't really that crazy heavy. Yeah, they feel a tiny bit heavier than stock, but not by much. And if you guys notice the stock bumper, looks like it could come in more, especially if you ain't running a winch. Yeah, you can suck that bumper in more, give you more angle approach to uh, coming obstacles. I'll get this guy off. I'm still going to eventually use those rims because I'm going to get the mud slingers from uh, Proline. The 540s that are like technically 44 inch mud tires in real life. And um, run those on this truck because I really like the mud slingers. I run them on my bomber. I would like to run them on my Bronco too. And just about every other color I have. But those things can get pricey when you're buying in bulk. So. But I will eventually get those. So that way I can have really good grippy tires. Because even these grip pretty dang good. Especially when it's wet on rock. These get wet the stickier they get I've noticed. Because I use these in the snow with the uh, TRX4 Bronco. And man, these suckers, they're gripping. In my opinion, they're better than the Hyrax at most areas than not. So, you know. These rock, rock beast, or beast, whatever, rock growlers work really, really, really good. And these center caps are still able to go on. From the uh, stock rims. So. That's cool too. To cover. Cover your wheel nut. But. Uh, I really think. They look pretty dang good. On the truck. And those rims. I think they look pretty nice. So. We're going to run those. See how much better it does. 
before I add weight, since these are aluminum rims, um, and go from there. See if I need to add weight to compensate for that spare. Now, spare barely affects it, but that's when it's on, like, to me, that's when it's on a super steep angle. And uh, then it seems to affect it. The longer wheelbase kind of hurts it, too, due to the fact the body and then the bumper has to be out right here so far. That kind of hurts it. it. keeps catching up on the rear bumper a lot on very steep stuff. And I found out these shackles or D-rings, if you will, are not metal or aluminum. They're plastic. See how the coating's all ripped off that one? So they are plastic, but still, they still have nice look to them and stuff. But, uh, yeah, I'm going to just slide the bumper in some more. And uh, that's my first upgrade is wheels and tires. You know, yeah, I could just take the tires off those rims and put them on these rims, but I don't feel like doing all those screws and doing all these screws when I don't want to keep these on this truck. I want to throw these stock rims back on it and, um, and, uh, put the, uh, mud slingers. I know that looks like a UDR, but that's just the body. The UDR is right here. But those mud slingers right there that I run on the bomber, that's what I want to put on my, uh, there you go. That's what I run on the bomber is those low C22 rims. These are 1.9 stretched over 22 rims. But those mud slingers, I want those on all my crawlers. Those do amazing. Cold, hot, dry, wet, doesn't matter. In my opinion, those are like an all-terrain season tire. And uh, they do really well. And uh, the Bronco loved them up there. That thing ripped on them. I can, I'm, a sh I'm sure that the, uh, the Sport would love them too. You know. And then I've been doing that guy too. I don't know if I showed that yet or not. But I've been getting that going. I have it. Running with the mini low C ESC, the little rock crawler ESC for lighter weight and stuff. And uh, I just got to get a servo, but I'm going to sell that guy too. I don't want to keep that truck or low C uh, comp crawler. So I'm going to sell that too once I get a servo and make everything a little bit more legit on it and paint the body on that guy. And then they get rid of it, and then I just need two more two stock TRX4 tires for my 6x6, because I like how that looks. It looks like the 80s rims that used to be on those Toyotas that people would throw on them, those American racing rims. So I just need to get two more and uh, throw those on there. So hopefully my uncle will sell me his stock set, since he has like three sets of aftermarket rims now for his TRX4. But uh, that way I can run it with these and see how these perform on that 6x6. And I'm half tempted to throw that castle system that was in the Bronco and throw it in the 6x6. And then uh, get another 3800 for the Bronco like I have in the uh, bomber out of the Defender that I had and run... The 1900 kV, that's what that is in this guy. More torque and stuff because it's such a big truck. And then run a 3800, maybe a 2650 or something. And that guy. And then uh, go from there. This, I'm going to keep box stock as much as possible. Other than tires. Right now it has rims too, but... You know, once I get the mudslingers, that's all I'm going to have is on those on here. And add a little weight to it. But I'm keeping all the electronic stock. Um, I don't know why people are saying the servos suck in these. There's a couple people. Uh, I totally disagree. As you can see in my video, when I'm in angles like this, I turn it, it shifts the whole truck over. Especially that one rock where I'm completely sideways. 
and I'm viewing it from the back, and I turn it, it just puts the truck back over like that. You know what I mean? So, I'm sorry, but this stock servo versus any brand on the market, I want to say, will beat it. This servo will beat it. Guaranteed. It'll beat an SCX-10 servo. It's all. It's just as good as that little cheap-ass Savix right there. That cheap Savix is is thirty-five bucks, and uh, it'll it'll beat it, guaranteed. And uh, the, of course, we all know how the cheap freaking TRX fours servos are. They're junk. This thing, it. I mean, it has torque. It's not fast, but it has torque, and that's what you need. You don't need it to be fast, you need it to have torque. So, in a sense, with it being slow, it gives you a scale realism turning radius. It's not like, <laughs> all quick, you know what I mean? Sorry for the weird hand gesture and noise, but I'm just explaining it better, the best I know how. <laughs> but anyway, you know, it gives you a more realistic turning as you're turning the, the rig and stuff and uh you know it has the torque that's all i can say you know you guys may disagree with me that's fine that's your opinion but you know i've proven it i've ran this sucker out there you guys have seen it that you know it torques i mean even on that one spot where where you know it's like that and the back ends up all high too and it's still all went went turning it you know and it barely even struggles. I'm sure if you do a BC on this truck stock, this uh, this thing would get more torque to the servo, and uh, even be that much stronger to it, you know. But uh, that's just my opinion, guys. It's stronger than most stock servos. I mean, almost out of any brand, in my opinion, and. Uh, as you can see, it's barely touched. Sorry, guys. Let me get my hand up there. It's barely scraped the frame rails a little bit here. And the skid plate really didn't hang me up. I mean, you can see marks on it, of course. But, you know, when I was running it, I didn't have a problem over those rocks. <clears throat> and in my opinion, I climbed... The most treacherous rocks I've seen anybody climb yet to climb with this rig. I mean, with most of my videos of all my rigs, I climb harder and steeper and rockier stuff than almost most people out there on YouTube and stuff. I'm not trying to sound cocky, but I'm just saying, especially for this guy, box stock review, I mean... I've climbed the rockiest stuff so far with this vehicle completely stock versus really anybody out there that's had this truck. And just to show you guys the true capability of this truck. And um, it's very capable. I'm glad they did it as a full droop right out of the box. It may need a tiny bit more oil or heavier dutier oil in it to uh, kind of stiffen up the suspension a tiny bit, but then again, that's why you can adjust it too, but I like it the way it is, uh, full droop, that's how I have all my rigs, and it just, this thing works, it just lacks entire compound, and uh, well, we fixed that today, and uh, I'll have something up and running Hopefully Saturday, maybe even Friday, because i got to go up there Friday, and if I have to do a solo run and retest it in the same area, just to, so you guys aren't all, oh, you know, how can you get a true uh, test out of it if you don't run it in the same area? I always run in the same area when I change stuff on my rigs. That's like one of my main go-to spots. It's just one spot I didn't film it when it was stock on these tires and it's the rock of doom if you guys have watched my videos from continuing from my scx 10 even up to the 6x6 i believe even to 
My Bronco in his brand new. I haven't taken that guy on there. I'll probably take that with me too. Just to see if she can do it. But I, I've climbed, climbed this uh, rock I call Rock of Doom at Whitewash. And boy, let me tell you, these things would not grip worth the to save its life. You know what I mean? As you guys can see throughout the video at Spain, it would just slip and slide for the most part. So you can imagine a rock elevated basically like that, maybe higher. It it wasn't it wasn't gonna grip. It couldn't even get up on the rock, let alone stay going up the rock. You know what I mean? And the tires would just wrinkle up really bad and go flat and uh send it over. So I mean they're soft, that's good in a way, but they don't they don't grip in the front. You know what I mean? All that weight transfers and then the front quits gripping and then it just wrinkles the rear up and sends it over. So since I have grippier tires, we'll see how it affects and if it still wrinkles in the back real bad to where it flips it backwards or not. Hopefully not. But uh you don't know until you try it, right? And uh that's what I'll do probably Friday. I'll try and get RC uh adventures out there with me. Uh as long as he's feeling good and stuff. Um we'll get him out there hopefully and I'll run this, test it and I'll possibly just let him drive that one. That way we can run them, compare them together side by side. Since I've never ran that sport up that incline. And then once I get the other two tires for that guy, I'll do the same there. I need to take that rig out to the Jeep back there. On the Trail Finder 2 chassis. I need to take her out and give her a run. She hasn't ran in like, I don't even know how long. But anyway, guys, I'm going to quit yapping. This video has been long enough. All right, guys, uh, I hope you enjoy, and we'll see you on the next adventure.